everyone today is Shane's birthday I have like lines across my face whatever and I just wanted um and me and Shane to poke on our finger yeah you're gonna get poked on your finger today you have and to wake up Shane like too yep Shane's still sleeping and I sorry they were Lighting's going all wonky on me. I wanted to kind of share with you guys the birth story of Shane this morning while I have a chance. So, a year ago, um, I was experiencing contractions and stuff like that, and I decided, I thought my water broke, so I decided to go to the hospital. And um, the hospital that I was delivering at was almost an hour away. Yeah. And so we decided to, we needed to go because if anything happened, I didn't want to be delivering, don't do that, I didn't want to be delivering um, Shane in the car or anything that would not be comfortable. So we headed off to the hospital and we found out when we got there. And we got, we called our friends at two in the morning. Um, to come and watch Cole and Ira and so they came and they slept here um, and so we got to the hospital probably around 3 and they checked me and she was like um, you're at a 5 she's like your water didn't break but you're at a 5 so we're probably going to end up keeping you here and I was like yay we're having a baby but it actually it didn't seem real yet because I, I was having contractions but they weren't like super close together they weren't timeable like you know they're supposed to be before you get go to the hospital and so okay you guys stop stop so they had me walking the halls for an hour and like I said it was still kind of unreal to me that I was gonna be having a baby and my husband and I were having literally having races down the hallway like like I said, I was contracting, but it didn't seem like it was that bad, and they weren't timeable. Like, I felt like I can go, you know, 10, 20 minutes before I would have, like, another contraction. So we walked to the halls for an hour, and um, they checked me again. They're like, well, there has been change. She's like, there hasn't been necessarily more dilation, but um, I was thinning out a lot more. She's like, so we're... We're definitely going to be keeping you and you're going to be having your baby. Like I said, it didn't seem real to me. And so my midwife came in and she was talking to me and she's like, you know what, I think we should break your water um, because I was going to be doing a water birth and they needed to make sure that my water was cleared. Um, if there wasn't, it wasn't green or anything like that so that I could do the water birth. And I was like, okay, we could do that. And so they broke my water and while they were breaking my water, they started filling up this big like inflatable tub in my um, room and I was doing hypno birthing and so I was like okay now it's time to like get serious and get into the mindset and stuff like that so I um they broke my water and then you know 
the contractions was still not timeable, but they were more intense. And I can honestly say that with Shane, I had, I don't think I even told Chris this, I feel like I had a painless birth. Like it was not painful at all. It was intense. Like there was a lot of like intense pressure and stuff like that. So it was definitely intense, but it wasn't painful. And so we are finally admitted at four o'clock in the morning. They break my water, they fill up the tub. I get in and I'm in the zone. Like I don't think I talked to Chris pretty much at all. I might have said a few things. And my midwife was great. She kept coming in and she would just kneel down next to the tub with me. And when I would have a contraction, which again, not timeable, like I felt like they were maybe they were just sporadic. They weren't ever, ever timeable. Um, if she saw that my face was a little too tense while I was having a contraction though, she would just cool I stop. She would just rub I will hold you, give me a second. She would just kind of rub my forehead like this, trying to get me to relax more. And she was she was awesome. Um, and she's like, and by the way that you're breathing during your contraction, she's like, I think you're gonna be having a baby around seven o'clock. Like I said, I was admitted at four o'clock in the morning and contractions are not timeable. I was dilated when I got into the water. They checked me one more time before I got into the water. And I was dilated to a six at that point. And so from four o'clock, she says that I'm gonna have a baby around seven o'clock. So that's three hours of, I would consider active labor. Um, I breathed through everything and then at seven o'clock I'm like, you know, this isn't gonna happen. I was still, I wasn't like in denial, like I knew I was gonna be having a baby. But it still, I didn't think it was gonna be anytime soon because like I said, contractions were not timeable. And they were not timeable the entire time. Um, they were not so intense that I was crying out in pain or anything like that. Like I said, I had a painless birth. Seven o'clock rolls around and as I tell people, they were changing the guards at Buckingham Palace. Um, there was a shift change. And so I was getting new nurses, a new midwife was coming in. Um, the new nurse came in and was taking down information and introduced herself to me. And my the midwife that was with me during the labor was out talking to the shift change midwife to update her on what was going on with me and all of a sudden I yell out there's a head um or he's coming I said something to that effect and I never felt I wish I wouldn't have said anything <laughs> because my peaceful quiet hypnobirthing environment got thrown out the window at that point because um, they, like I said, they were changing shifts and so I hadn't even met the new midwife yet. And she comes running in. I think she had time literally to just throw on gloves. Um, and I didn't want to literally push Shane out. I wanted to breathe through it. And I got to the point where his head was out and I'm pretty sure I said during that time, like, this hurts or it burns or something like that. Because I had a non-medicated birth. And um, even though it wasn't painful, like I said, it was, it was a lot of pressure. <laughs> and my husband, my dear sweet husband, when I said that, he goes, well, duh. <laughs> Gotta love that guy. <laughs> That's exactly what you said. He's like, I don't know if that's exactly what I said. No, that's exactly what it, he said. I remember these things. Stop. So, um, with by the time it was 7-12, 7-12 in the morning, he was born. And so, and like I said, change it, within 12 minutes, um, I had Shane. And it was just a few contractions, I think two legit 
pushes like it was not I wasn't pushing for hours and hours on end I've never had to push for hours and hours on ends I don't even know why people do that like I, I don't think that's real I think people exaggerate um which they probably don't I just I've never experienced that so everything is good we Shane and I bonded he latched on perfectly and everything Chris and I were taken to a different room like a recovery room and we just kind of slept and then later Chris went to go pick the boys up and this is where my story kind of takes a a drastic change while Chris was picking the boys up I started hemorrhaging um, I went to the bathroom and a huge blood clot just came out and I had to use that you know help pull thing in the bathroom thing and like I need help and they came in and it was bad it was a bad hemorrhage and it was 10 hours after I gave birth and that's not a common thing at all um, and oh my goodness Chris came back with the boys while this was happening and I guess the receptionist at the desk or a nurse at the desk that says there's something going on with your wife you can go back here but the boys can't go back there um, and I remember during this whole hemorrhaging thing I told one of the nurses and like my husband he's getting the boys my kids are coming I don't want them back here at this time I don't want them to see this and so my sister-in-law um, she ended up coming and she got Cole and Ira and she took them to her house for the night and during this whole time I didn't know what was going on with Shane I didn't know where Shane was because he was like in the room with me and I remember a nurse trying to feed him a bottle because he was he wasn't eating he was really lethargic he wasn't breastfeeding like he breastfed initially and then that was it so he was really lethargic and then I had to be brought back down to the labor and delivery room out of my recovery room just in case I needed a DNC which thankfully I didn't need one um, and then I was exhausted after that and I fell asleep but I remember asking can Shane be brought down to us and I guess within the chaos of everything um, the nurse was like yeah I don't know where your baby is they actually brought Shane to the NICU because his blood sugar had gotten so low and he became so lethargic so he was in the NICU for 24 hours and I didn't see him for over 12 hours of that time because I couldn't get out of bed I couldn't get in a wheelchair to go down and see him and that was the hardest I think 12 hours of my life because I just had this baby and he was perfect to me and then he was taken away and I couldn't even see him um, so that was really really hard so he was okay though he started eating and his blood sugar came back up and stuff like that it, but I don't have very many this is turning into a really long clip I don't have very many pictures of us in the hospital because like I said it was only 10 hours after um, he was born that everything happened and when I did did see him he had like an IV in his hand because they thought that he might have had an infection or something and then when he got out of the NICU, they had to change out the IV. And the only spot that they could find a place to put an IV was his forehead. And I did not want a picture of Shane with an IV in his forehead. And so, that's, he was able to come home one day late. Um, but everything, he, after that, I thought I wasn't going to be able to breastfeed. I thought everything was all totally screwed up. And that's not the case. He loves to breastfeed. He, I breastfed him for a year, which is way longer than I breastfed any, any of my other kids. With Cole, I was able to go for three months. With Ira, I was able to go for six months. And with Shane, I've gone the whole year and still going strong. So that's kind of his birth story. And, and happy birthday, Shane. So he's still asleep. Do you guys have something say. you want to say? Yeah. And we can see him sound like happy birthday, ta ta ta. Happy birthday, ta ta ta. Something you want to say, Cole? Yep. And um, well, 
Well, we were at a well. Well, we were there um at that whatever it called um um we just watched them frozen. Yeah, the next day you guys came to the hospital and you were able to watch movies with me, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shane was so cute when he sweeped a lot. Yeah, he was. And I got that to the, the doctor when I was, I got a, a tell on my kid and I did a lot of tiger neighborhood. And then we we'll do a fire after me. Okay. We'll turn it off now. We'll see you guys in balloon. We're about to have Shane open up his birthday present. Shane. Everyone sit down. Shane, look. Well, look what Daddy has. Shane. It's Shane. Look at present time. No. Just more focus on these ha. balloons. A present time. What is that? What do you wish this person with the bump on their head? <laughs> what was that? What was that? That was a, a pop up thing. A glass of family thing. I've never heard you do that before. Can you figure it out? So you do that and then you try and guess what it is. Maybe, maybe it's a car toy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> rip it. Rip it. Rip it. Rip it. Rip it. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yes, it is. It's a car toy thing. I was right. What's in there, Shane? Hold on. Let him do it. Let him do it, you guys. Let him do it. Poke. Yeah, you wow. got poked too. Huh? He is a really good. Keep going. Much rather play with the paper. And, and I knew it was his. Should we get the cars out? These, if you pull them back, they go by themselves. Pull them back? Oh. And how did that stick his tongue out? That's the fun one. Whoa! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at Go, go to town. Look at all that frosting. 
break the ice cream. But there's a cake. And this is my secret. I like it. You might end up having to go before you get it. I'm a real one. one. So just we'll make sure that little piece gets sent home to you. Or maybe you could just get a small piece. Okay, never mind. I can't find the game here. Yeah, you need to wait. You need to just wait. I don't know. Shane! Are you done now? What if there were a magic Okay, I'll go, I'll go fill up that bathtub. Hello everybody. It's that time again to say goodnight. And we'll see you tomorrow. It's been a pretty busy day. Um, I worked. Go figure. It's a Monday. I worked. Um, Amy had to go to a wake appointment. And then we had some friends come over and play for a bit. Um, and then I took Cole and Ira to the pool, which you guys didn't see. I kind of forgot to take the camera with me, but we weren't there for very long, so. And then ran and got Shane's cake, came home, ate dinner, and then had a birthday party. So it's been a pretty full day. Um, Amy's not feeling too well. Hopefully it doesn't get too bad um, and doesn't last too long. There's kind of this crazy tradition in her family that whenever they move someone gets sick so, so I hope that doesn't happen actually when we when we moved here to to Utah from Chicago Amy got strep throat so and she says that her throat hurts right now and she's congested so so we'll see Hopefully she could just get some rest and feel a little bit better in the morning. Um, so yeah, that's been our day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.